So in this video, we're going to look at the alternating series remainder. So this is the formula for the remainder, and I'll explain what all of that means, and then I'll go through a couple examples. And we're also going to talk about absolute versus conditional convergence in this video. So I should say alternating. There's a typo there. Um, if a convergent alternating series satisfies the condition that it's decreasing, which it has to if it's going to be a convergent alternating series. So a decreasing convergent alternating series, then the absolute value of the remainder. So what the reason we're doing absolute value of the remainder is we don't care whether the remainder is positive or negative. So whether the approximation is going to be too big or too small, we're just looking at how big that remainder is. So the absolute value of the remainder is going to be less than or equal to the first neglected term. So what that means is if you're using the first three terms to approximate a series, then the remainder is going to be less than or equal to the fourth term. So in these examples, you're going to have to be told first how many, how many terms you're using or what degree you're looking at or something like that um, to approximate a series. And then you're also going to, um, you could be asked to find what the remainder is of your approximation. So I'll go through an example of what that looks like. But there is going to be another type of remainder that we'll talk about later. And that is um, the remainder in general. So for a series that doesn't necessarily have to be alternating, for alternating, it's a little bit easier because you're always just using the next term. So you just have to read the question, figure out how many terms is it asking you to use to do the approximation, and then the next one is going to be what you use as the largest that your remainder could be. So this one is just saying, the, the wording of the question just says to approximate the sum of the following series by its first six terms. So it's only asking us to do, to do that. I'm also in this example gonna go through how you would get the remainder if it was asking you for that. And we're gonna do a ton of examples in class with these because it is very common to show up in free response problems where it's asking you something to do with the remainder. So I'm gonna go through that in this example. So first of all, it's asking us to approximate the sum of the following series by its first six terms. So what that means is you need to plug in one, two, three, four, five, six. Normally, if you have to do this without a calculator, they would not ask you to use that many terms. So for this one, I am gonna end up plugging stuff into the calculator. If they do want you to do something without a calculator, it's often gonna be the first two terms, the first three terms, maybe the first four, if it's gonna be something that is really easy to evaluate. You can leave things unsimplified, but a lot of times with these types of problems, you are gonna to have to simplify because it's going to be asking you, for example, to show that this is less than one over 200. So in order to show that, you are gonna to have to simplify. But if it's not asking you to do that, just keep in mind, you don't have to simplify these. So when you plug in one, so if I plug in an odd number, this is going to be uh, positive. If I plug in an even number, this is going to be negative. So I don't really need to plug numbers in here. It's just going to, the signs are going to alternate. So I'm really just plugging numbers in here. So I'm plugging in one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's going to be one minus one over two factorial plus one over three factorial minus one over four factorial plus one over five factorial minus one over six factorial. So again, I'm going to plug all this into the calculator but normally these are not going to be calculator questions, so you wouldn't have that many terms. So when you do plug this into the calculator, you're gonna get um, 0.63194. Technically, you only need three numbers after the decimal place. I usually just write more of them to be safe, especially because when it comes to remainder questions, the remainder is gonna be really, really small. So we're gonna need more numbers after the decimal for the remainder. So the absolute value of the remainder because again we don't care whether the sign of the remainder is positive or negative we just care how accurate is this so because i use the first six terms here the remainder is going to be less than or equal to one over seven factorial 
which is 0 0.000198. So this is the approximation because I plugged numbers into the rule for the sequence and this is your remainder. This is the largest that the remainder could possibly be because the remainder is less than or equal to this. So the remainder could be smaller than this, but I know that it's at least going to be this much. So what that means is that this approximation is within this of the exact value of the series. So you wouldn't be asked to find the exact value of the series. You can't find that unless you had an actual formula for it. So if they gave you a formula, you'd plug it in, but I don't think I've ever seen them give you a formula like that. So, you know, if something is geometric, there is a way to figure it out and we'll go through that in some free response problems. But in general, all you're doing is the approximation and the remainder. So absolute convergence, this is saying that if the series if this series converges, then this series also converges. So here we have absolute value. So if we take the absolute value of a sequence and that new series converges, that means the original one also converges. So really you would only use this if you have an alternating series, because if it's not alternating, then, we're then we don't need to be taking the absolute value anyway. So the absolute value here, that's really going to be the non-alternating. Because if we take absolute value of the sequence, it's now no longer alternating. So if the non-alternating series converges, that means your original series also converges. So the question here, is the converse of the last theorem true? So the converse would be if the alternating series converges, then the non-alternating one also converges. No, it's not going to be true, because if you think about the alternating harmonic series, which is this, or it could be negative one to the n, but basically something that alternates, and the non-alternating part is one over n, the alternating harmonic series converges, but if I get rid of the uh, alternating part and I just have one over n, that's going to diverge by the p-series test. So the converse is not, the converse of this is not true. So Again, the order that you need to check it is if the non-alternating one converges, that means your original one, so your alternating one, conver converges, but not the other way around. So definitions of absolute convergence versus conditional convergence. So if you have a series, um, so a series is absolutely convergent if the absolute value of the sequence converges. This is the non-alternating. So if the non-alternating series converges, that means your original series is absolutely convergent. If the non-alternating one does not converge, so uh, well, it may or may not. If the original one converges, but the non-alternating one does not, then we say that that series is conditionally convergent. So for example, the alternating harmonic series would be conditionally convergent because the original one converges, but when I take the absolute value, it does not. And um, yeah, so the non-alternating absolute value means the non-alternating one. So the non-alternating one diverges. So you could be asked, does a, if you're, if you're asked does a series converge, then you don't need to say whether it converges absolutely or conditionally, but you do occasionally see questions that ask you, does this converge conditionally or absolutely? And so then you need to check, does the non-alternating one also converge? So we'll go through a couple examples. So this one is asking whether the original series is convergent or divergent. If it is convergent, then you have to say whether it's conditionally or absolutely convergent. So this one uh, actually is going to diverge. If something diverges, then you don't need to check conditional versus absolute because that only applies to converging. So this one diverges because the limit as n approaches infinity 
negative 1 to the n, n factorial over 2 to the n, that does not exist. So this grows faster than this. So if I looked at the non-alternating one, that limit's going to infinity. So this is um, basically alternating between positive and negative infinity or a very large positive number and, and then a very large negative number. So this one diverges, so I don't need to check conditional or absolute. So this one, the alternating one would converge. I'm not gonna write all of this out, but the alternating one converges because the because um, it's an alternating series, the terms are decreasing in absolute value to zero. That limit would be going to zero. So the alternating one converges. If I take the absolute value, the non-alternating series is going to diverge by the p-series test because p would be one-half. So that means this series converges conditionally. So if the non-alternating one diverges, then but the original one converges, then we say that that series converges conditionally. Then some more of the same. So this one you need to be careful with because this looks a little bit different than the other exponents that you're used to seeing. So you just have to make sure that this actually is going to have the signs alternate. So if I plug in, it might be helpful, I'll do this off to the side, it might be helpful to distribute stuff. It might not be, but sometimes that helps. So n squared plus n over two. So if I plugged in a an even number, um, then it's going to be uh, positive. If I plug in an odd number, then it's also going to be positive. So this one, does not alternate, so I wouldn't want to use the alternating series test. But if I take the absolute value, it's going to be geometric. So I can say, instead of using the alternating series test, I'm using the geometric series test. So this one converges by the geometric series test. And because the absolute value of that um, converges, then I can say that the original one converges absolutely so I did this just to make sure that the signs weren't going to alternate because you don't want to use the alternating series test if you don't have an alternating series this one I'm actually going to skip it if I'm leaving it up here because those of you that are using the notes packet to take notes you'll see it in there but it actually requires a test that you haven't learned yet so we're not going to do this one yet. We are going to come back and do it eventually, but um, I'm going to skip that one for now. Okay, then something like this. So it's asking, does this series converge, diverge, or converge conditionally? So um, you can't have, I mean, if the answer is two, then we know that one or three is not true. So I mean, you can eliminate this right away because something can't diverge and converge conditionally. If it converges, if it converges conditionally, it's also going to converge. If it converges, then it may converge absolutely. Um, but we'll check that out. So this one is alternating and the terms are going to be decreasing in absolute value to zero. So that means the alternating one converges um, and if I take the absolute value and so I have the non-alternating one that one I would probably use the integral test to check and that one is going to diverge so because the non-alternating one diverges but the original one converges then we say it converges conditionally so then one and three is going to be true. And then this one, which of the following converges? Absolutely. Um, so with this one, the alternating one converges. When I take the absolute value, um, this one also is going to converge because I would use the P-series test. P is equal to three. So this one converges absolutely. 
This is the alternating harmonic series, so we know that this one converges conditionally, so it can't be this one. And then this one is almost the same as this, except P is two, not three, but this one does converge absolutely, so it would be one and three. And then the last example, this is something that you see, this is really a P series test, um, but you see something like this fairly often in multiple choice questions. So in order for this one to converge, it, the signs need to alternate. If the signs don't alternate, then it's gonna diverge by the P series test. So we know that this exponent has to be something that is going to make the signs alternate, so it can't be even. So I can eliminate all of the even numbers. So it's either gonna be three or five. And then here, this one is a geometric series. And in order for a geometric series to converge, the ratio is going to have to be less than 1. So I know it can't be 5 because that would be 5 over 4, which is more than 1. So it's going to have to be 